distance all the way from Sao Paulo to Orlando on a high-speed train. Right. We're probably not going to just give that to them. We're probably going to say, look, we'd rather take them to Orlando on one of our jets. So if you think we're just going to transfer our bags through to your train service, that's probably not going to happen without yeah. a fee. So <laughs> I'm only thinking that we're not we're not going to make it easier for anybody else. It's burn more oil. It's going to take more time. It's just never going to be a real great competitor to the airlines. And it isn't a great competitor even in Europe so much. What you're about to see is a multi-part investigation conducted by me and other members of the High Speed Rail Club into the truth about the anti-rail groups around the nation. Are they really run by citizens? Do they really have the best interest of the American in mind? Or is there an ulterior motive to protect the interests of a few? As one prominent individual recently put it, follow the money. And follow the money we did. And what it confirmed was the wise age old adage of Officer John McClain, it's always been about the money. Our investigation in this video focuses on Citizens Against Rail Expansion, otherwise acronymized as CARE. They're the most powerful and organized group that is now fighting against All Aboard Florida here in the state of Florida. And it quite plainly says on its website that it's not a collection of elitist representatives and it actually supports railways. It couldn't be more felicious. Let's meet the board. Jane Feinstein is second in command on the list. She moved to the area seven years ago and is a member of the Board of Governors of French Men's Creek and also serves as chair of its External Affairs Committee. French Men's Creek, a swanky country club, which happens to be right by the FEC track. Remember Representative Patrick Murphy? Yeah, the Democrat who failed recently in his Senate ambitions, pretends to fight for the environment, and has attacked all aboard Florida at every chance he got? Feinstein happened to donate to his campaign. She's not the only one on the board from French Men's Creek. Michael Ferdinandi, who moved here only six years ago. Michael served on a senior role of the Ford Motor Company years ago. There's Judy Goldenberg, a Jupiter resident who happens to be the vice president of Master Property Owners Association of the Gold Village at Admiral's Cove, as well as co-chairman of the Government Liaison Committee for the community. Admiral's Cove and the Gulf Village happen to be built on, you guessed it, the FEC tracks. Certainly these business geniuses are looking out for the poor homeowners along the track. The lawyer for CARE is a man known as Stephen M. Ryan, star attorney for firm McDermott, Will & Emery. He's been recognized as one of the best lawyers in America from 2005 to 2017 and among the top 5% of DC lawyers. He has been lobbying against All Aboard Florida since and we can only concur that he may have cost it a pretty penny. There are other connections into many in the boating industry and Florida Senator Debbie Mayfield, a Republican who authored a very non-Republican-like bill that would further regulate all aboard Florida. That bill is now dead in the water just this week, thanks to the House Subcommittee on Transportation. But these connections will be put in another video. Now, there were other groups who protested against All Aboard Florida. One of the loudest ones was Florida Not All Aboard, headed by Casey Trailer as an attempt to have a campaign to bolster her own failed political campaign into becoming an elected representative. One of the stranger protesters was a group known as Shalom International, which protested against All Aboard Florida for choosing Siemens, a German-based company, as its manufacturer, on the basis that they were bringing Nazi trains to Florida. Now, these groups have faded away, and the only one that's really sticking around in the fight is CARE. However, CARE didn't really come to prominence until mid-2015, when a certain character joined onto the top position of its board. His name, his job, and his status of what he has done will also confirm and shock you into what we've been saying in this club, that the airlines have indeed been in collusion to stop high-speed rail in this country. His name is Robert Crandall. Robert Crandall was a former president, chairman, and CEO of American Airlines and continues to serve as a director and consultant to various companies, including airlines. He happens to be an avid golfer at one of these two perfectly located clubs, probably. Crandall is a legend in the business world, famously known in business textbooks that I've read for implementing simple methods to cut costs 
on American Airlines. One such method was taking out one olive out of the salad to save a total of $40,000 a year. Crandall's business sense hasn't deterred. When he held a fundraiser for care at Stewart's Lyric Theater, he raised about $100,000. Shortly after he joined in 2015, Care was able to quickly raise $1.1 million. The exact source of it is unknown. Crandall has also donated the maximum personal amount to Democrat Patrick Murphy, twice. He's also said this about All Aboard Florida. If this were the Old West, we'd round up a posse and go get the bastard. Crandall said, now we raise money and file lawsuits. Coincidentally, he also said this about High Speed Rail in 2009. As I suspect all of you, landings and takeoffs at LaGuardia Airport are limited and airspace in around New York is very crowded. Nonetheless, a substantial number of flights still leave LaGuardia, bound for Washington DC and Boston, both places to which railroad track already runs. If I were the king of Spain, that is, if I could do whatever I wanted, I'd prohibit flights to either Boston or Washington from LaGuardia while simultaneously upgrading the rail system, tracks, equipment, power, and whatever else is needed to assure maximum running speed and minimum elapsed time. By doing so, we would better use the railroad asset and would free airplanes, airspace, and airport facilities for flights to places that cannot be conveniently reached by rail. Once that was accomplished, I'd move in the same direction in and around Chicago, thus relieving the pressure on O'Hare, and on the West Coast, thus relieving pressure at Los Angeles and San Francisco. So why the switch? Why would a snowbird who only visits Florida for half the year with little to no interest in country clubs start attacking a private venture that is bringing exactly the type of high-speed trains he was vouching for only a couple years ago? When you have plenty of stock options, equity in an industry that has taken billions of dollars from the government without competition, would you really want that gravy train to stop? Summer of 2015, we went to Emerge Americas and actually captured this footage of an American Airlines employee stating how much of a threat All Aboard Florida is to its business model and what steps it would take to stop that sort of program. He even included steps of denying visitors in Florida getting onto the train including fees question yeah. now like uh just like now in the united states like they're pushing like for high speed rail for like domestic travel and stuff yeah. like that what's it going to do or what is american airlines going to do or anything about that like what is its attitude towards well, it? well i mean of course we're gonna we're probably gonna have to roll with the punches All right. um, high speed rail to what extent i mean yes we operate between here and orlando yes we operate between la and las vegas and right. that's the high speed rail they're talking yeah, about yeah those corridors are pretty much like the big yeah. things that they're going would you would you want to i mean most of those flights that we do are connecting flights so would you want to come in from tokyo on an airplane and then jump on a train or would you want to stay in the airport and jump on a plane to get to vegas yeah or would you want to come in from south america and get into miami airport and then go get on a train to go to orlando or just yeah, because like all aboard Florida now, they're building Miami, Orlando. Yeah. That's that's for sure getting done. There's no yeah. there's no saying that there's not yeah. gonna get done. And I'm sure so. that we're gonna I'm sure we're not just gonna say, sure, we'll let you check your bags all the way from Sao Paulo to Orlando on a high speed train. Right. We're probably not gonna just give that to them. We're probably gonna say, look, we'd rather take them to Orlando on one of our jets. So if you think we're just gonna transfer our bags through to your train service, that's probably not gonna happen without yeah. a fee. So <laughs> I'm only thinking that we're not we're not gonna make it easier for anybody else. Uh, okay. But, you know, it's the same thing. I, I, I make it acquainted like Uber, you know. Cabs yeah. are worried now because of Uber, and I think the airlines have to be concerned about high-speed rail as well. No, for sure. Because, like, I mean, I remember going to Germany and, like, all over the place, like, yeah. no one took uh, I know in Belgium, there's no connecting flights in, inside Belgium. Yeah. It's just all trains. Yeah. But, I mean, I, about, the, the trains are fantastic, though, I do got to say. Yeah. I would say probably... 80% of our international traffic that we bring in that goes to our, that continues on to Orlando is probably 80% of it. So you get on an Orlando flight, maybe 20% of it is local traffic boarding. Right. They're either driving or you know flying on another airline. But we carry a, almost. I can tell you when we're bringing people from Brazil, they're not staying in Miami. They're going on to Orlando. Yeah. Okay. Same thing when we bring the the Japanese traveler from into Los Angeles and yeah. they're going to Vegas. They're going to Vegas on us. Yeah. But it's a good question. As we stated in a previous video, there is a lot at stake for the airlines when it comes to the threat of high-speed passenger rail. Flights between places around the world such as London to Paris, Tokyo to Osaka, and other similar routes around 200 to 400 miles apart 
from each other have close to little travel share in short haul flights and are dominated as high as 80% by high speed rail. American Airlines operates short haul flights between Miami and Orlando. Crandall is someone who really cares for, quote, noise and vibration in downtown Stewart and structural harm to its business, when he himself advocated for adding runways and airports not too long ago. Remember when we captured footage from former CEO of Spirit Airlines, Ben Baldanza, saying this? I'll respond to that. I don't, I don't think we're going to have to react for a long time, to be honest. Um, we're, you know, I think it's great for the world that that's kind of happening, but I think it's going to just be uh, a rounding error in terms of how many people really travel in terms of things like that. The economics of that, you'll just never beat uh, an A320 with 180 seats flying between here and Orlando is always going to be a cheaper economic solution than a bullet train where you've got to lay physical stuff down, where you got to, it's going to burn more oil, it's going to take more time. It's just never going to be a real great competitor to the airlines. And it isn't a great competitor even in Europe so much. Although in Europe, it's clearly more part of the system. But even the European system, the, the data are unclear, but it's not even clear that they make money as a, as a venture. They're clearly a great social good to have them, but it's not clear that they're economically profitable entities, the railroads in Europe. And I think it's going to be real challenging for your railroad, frankly, but other airlines like yours, to make a profitable business out of what is socially a really good idea. Yeah, when we really looked at it for a long time at CNBC, and when you really look at the economics, there's only like one route in the United States where I think it makes any sense. It's like trying to get from New York to New Jersey or to Philadelphia, and, and that was about it um, at this point. I mean. It's just an enormous you, amount of You need a concentration of people so large, taking it so often for it to be workable in any way, that it, it ends up being subsidized by the taxpayer forever. Um, I mean, so we run, the United States run trains, runs trains through Montana. Those don't make any money either. No, 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 Montana but make the country money. thinks it's good to have trains go through Montana. So we're not saying it won't happen. We're just saying to make a profitable standalone Entre you know, business out of it is a real tough thing. Well, Elon Musk says he's going to do this oh, round that gets across the country. Did that worry you at all? I mean, this guy says he's going to do these things, and everybody believes him that he does them, right? He goes into space, and, you, and he, he, he's going to get, I think, closer to the ground with his car sooner than almost everybody else. I mean, he's going to go into space, really? then go underground, and he'll all across the U.S. Okay, all right. Uh, if we've got any other questions, I'd say so we can go to the mic here. Well, a couple months after that, old Ben was ousted as CEO of Spirit Airlines to what critics were saying was due to poor performance as revenue dropped, cramming seats and creature comforts into airplanes and plunging stock prices. Airlines compete heavily for routes and only make small profits off of every seat. However, short haul airlines alleviate the pressure of pushing more seats at smaller distances. The more seats they can move, the more of a meager profit they can add on. It's also been disclosed that much of these airlines have been taking in an excess of $155 billion in subsidies, just up to 1990 line alone from the federal government, because their business model is unsustainable without it. American, Spirit, Southwest, United, Delta, all are estimated to receive millions of dollars a year from the government alone, and we can't even tell how far it is without even going to WikiLeaks. Remember how we talked about in the video mentioned that we did on how much money was pilfered out of the railroads? A profitable business that didn't need subsidies into airways and roadways, state-owned entities that needed federal subsidies to survive. This is now being threatened all over the country as airlines can lose millions in easy revenue. And we're talking about 175 easy million dollars to be exact due to essential airway service subsidies being shut down in a recent proposal by President Trump's budget. Airlines have artificially been kept alive, and the stagnation has caused airline companies, companies too big to fail to subsist on that model. If competition such as high-speed rail, proven to disrupt that model around the world, comes to America, it's adios short-haul flights. You know what else happened in 2015? American Airlines posted record profits, the highest of any carrier, and guess who owns a lot of stake in American Airlines? Bob Crandall. 
2015 was also the year all aboard Florida got serious and started construction at around the same time Crandall joined the fray. In 2015, a case was opened by the DOJ in collusion of fare prices by the major airliners. Back in 1982, according to Bloomberg, Robert Crandall, a senior executive at American Airlines, told the chief executive officer at Braniff Airlines, Howard Putnam, I have a suggestion for you. Raise your goddamn fares 20%. I'll raise mine the next morning. He added, you'll make more money, and I will too. Putnam, who was recording the conversation, didn't go along. As egregious as the behavior was, the resulting Department of Justice antitrust suit against American back in 1982 was settled with an agreement by Crandall not to do it again. He was also ordered to record all contacts with other airline executives for two years. Braniff went bust and Crandall became American CEO. Are the dots starting to connect? We hope what we brought to light shows the importance of this movement and what's really at stake. There are groups out there that want to stop this type of technology from bringing in millions of jobs to Americans, from fixing our infrastructure, for bringing a cleaner, safer, faster, and more competitive transportation technology to the United States. If you want to support us, keep, keep doing these videos to keep promoting for high-speed rail and to keep bringing the research that you guys want to watch. Please contribute to the High Speed Rail America Club on our Patreon account to keep this train moving forward. We'll be able to produce more videos, conduct more research, and advocate for building the right infrastructure around our country. All possible thanks to you. If you're not able to pledge, it's understandable. And we invite you to subscribe to the High Speed Rail America Club to keep getting news that the airline companies don't want you to know. We'll see you all next time.